Let's take a look at a lab problem from section 5.1. This problem is asking us uh, to look at the speed of the runner that's increasing steadily during the first three seconds of the race. Her speed at half intervals, half second intervals, is given in a table. Find the lower and upper estimates for the distance traveled in three seconds. So here we have the t value in seconds, that's a time in seconds, 0, 1, 2, 3 and uh, half second intervals and then this is the speed that they marked so they want us to use either L6 or R6 so L is the left hand endpoint approximations and R is the right hand endpoint approximations uh, for lower and upper estimates so we can see that the runner's speed is increasing steadily well steadily it's uh, 0, 6, 10, 14, 18, etc. Uh, then one of these expressions, the L, L6 or R6, will be the lower estimate, and then the other expression will give us the upper estimate. So I have the scatter plot plotted in Desmos, and <clears throat> We could take a look at this plot. Uh, we don't have to connect it, but I think maybe if we think about connecting it, we see that the graph kind of looks like this. Um, I prepared a bunch of uh, estimates or a, a rectangular estimates to try to find the area under this this curve using these sample points. And so, uh, if I take a look at the rectangles that we would create in these half-second integrals intervals. Um, <clears throat> this is actually using the right-hand endpoint. Uh, using the left-hand endpoint would start off with zero, because um, this would be the left-hand endpoint. So it's not actually you can't see it because it's it's going to have height of zero, and so the first rectangle would be in here. Oh, let's take a look at the left estimate. So the left estimate would actually be. Let's add another one here. It would be uh, 0, y equals 0 for values that are between 0 and uh, 0 0.5. <clears throat> so that's uh, the first rectangle that we would have. Now, I wouldn't really even call it a rectangle because uh, it's it's there's no area there so let's take a look at this one and let's match up the color so that it's looking at the same color and let's say this is an area uh, from 0.5 to 1 so this would be the left hand rectangle for the second rectangle the left hand endpoint rectangle for the second rectangle and then we'll take the third rectangle. Oops, bummer. There we go. Um, let's take the third rectangle, adjust the color, and let's call it from 1.5 to, uh, I'm sorry, from 1 to 1 1.5. <clears throat> and so if we continue on, uh, doing this, we'll see that, let me just do one more, um, our next rectangle would be this, 10.8, and matching up the colors, and going from 1.5 to 2, whoops, 1.5 to 2. Uh, this is what we have. So uh, it's not complete, but you get the picture. You see that um, compared to the graph itself, these rectangles are going to be below the graph. So the left-hand estimate, left-hand endpoints, would give us a lower estimate. Um, now let's hide these for now, and let's take a look at what happens if we use the right-hand endpoints. So if we use the right-hand endpoints, you see that it goes a little bit over the graph and so we have uh, um, upper estimates. So our lower estimates would be L sub 6 and our upper estimate would be R sub 6.
All right, <clears throat> now that we know those values, uh, the subinterval here have a width of whatever the delta t is. So if we take a look at the difference between any two consecutive t values, um, you see that the difference is 0.5. So let's put 0.5 for the difference there, the, the delta t. All right, now the first two subintervals uh, between 0. Point to 0 to 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 to 1, when calculating the left-hand endpoint, uh, the first value, so we're looking at the left-hand endpoints. So these are the left-hand endpoints. The first value that we get uh, is 0, uh, from 0 to 0 0.5. From 0 0.5 to 1, uh, the value that we get is whatever this value is at 0.5, which is uh, 6.2. So our first value is 0, our second value is 6.2. Right. so uh, enter your, uh, your smallest to largest values in the steps. And so here we just really need to look at the table. We're going to go to 6.2, 10.8, etc. And we end at 19.4. Uh, we didn't go that far in our graph, but if we were to go um, to 19.4 here, uh, this would be our graph from uh, 2.5 to 3. So this is the last graph that we would have. Um, I think we're missing one. Yeah, we're missing one. Let's let's throw that last one in. The one that we're missing is going to be this. Let's squeeze that in here. Actually, we would squeeze it in here somewhere, and this would be the graph from uh, two to two point five. So here we go. Uh, this would be the complete set of the lower estimates that we would be adding. So how many rectangles are there? The first one is the zero rectangle, so that's a zero contribution. And then the next one has height of 6.2, and then 10.8, um, and then 14.9, uh, 18.1, and this is the last one, has a height of 19.4, and so that's what that is. Uh, looks like we'll need a calculator to um, well, to calculate this, and it looks like we're just going to be adding uh, these numbers. So let's take our calculator out and add up these numbers. Uh, 0 plus 6.2 plus 10.8 plus 14.9 plus 18.1 plus 19.4. And then we have uh, 69.4. Uh, but remember, there's a 0 0.5 in the front here, so it's going to be uh, divided by 2 or multiplied by 0 0.5. So the whole total here would be 34.7. So that's the left-hand approximation. It looks like it's going to be a uh, lower bound. And so now they want to find the upper bound for us. So the upper bound, let's... Uh, turn that one on, turn everything else off. So the upper bound uh, will be these rectangles and all the way to the end and the last rectangle is going to have a height of 20.2. Our first rectangle is going to have, have a height of 6.2 so we actually start off with 6.2. So 6.2 and then we just carry on with the rest of our points. Uh, 6.2, 10.8, uh, 14.9, 18.1, 19.4, and then our last one is 20.2. And so we add that up. Now, in our calculator, we added up 0. Let's multiply this by 2 again. So when we added up all those numbers, we had 69.4. Uh, well, we added them up, up to 19.4. So let's just add one more, 20.2. And then we have 89.6, and that's the one we're going to multiply by 0. 0.5, and so we get 44.8.
and then we have found our upper bound. So uh, we have a lower bound of uh, 34.7 and an upper bound of 44.8. And uh, if we were to take the average, we'll probably get a good approximation of how much distance uh, this person covered. Okay, hope that helps.